The purpose of this video is to provide general information and education about the care of a critically ill child. It is in no way a substitute for the independent decision making and judgment by a qualified health care professional. The information contained in this video should not be used to make a diagnosis or to overrule the advice of a qualified health care provider, nor should it be used to provide advice for emergency medical treatment. Dressing a Central Venous Catheter by Mary Jean Manning Please note that in this video we will be following the guidelines used at Boston Children's Hospital. Some of this information may need to be modified based on the equipment, guidelines, and practices in place in your institution. Introduction My name is Mary Jean Manning. I am a pediatric clinical nurse specialist in the critical care department at Children's Hospital Boston. I will be reviewing central line dressing change. In this segment, we will be using our central line teaching trainer. Indications. You would want to perform this procedure if the central line dressing is visibly soiled, saturated with drainage, or has become non-occlusive. Here at Boston Children's Hospital, we routinely change a patient's transparent occlusive central line dressing every seven days. Contraindications Some healthcare providers would refrain from performing this procedure or use alternative methods in patients with an allergy to the transparent occlusive central line dressing. Equipment you will need the following equipment to perform the procedure. Clear adhesive dressing. Date label for dressing. Surface wipes. Sterile antiseptic sponge. 2x2 two two gauze. Antiseptic wipes. Tape, sterile gloves, clean gloves, mask with a shield. Point of clarification, wearing a mask with a shield. Please note that in our practice here at Boston Children's Hospital, we always wear a mask with a shield when performing this procedure. However, for the purpose of sound quality, the speaker will not be wearing one during this video. Hand sanitizer. Adhesive remover. Procedure. Here we have gloves for removal of the current dressing, a kit which will I will describe and show the contents of, masks for everybody in the room who may be near the patient, for example, parents if they will help the child stay still. If the patient is intubated, there is no need for a mask for the patient. However, if it's developmentally appropriate and the patient will wear a mask, and they are not intubated, we recommend a mask for the patient as well. We also use an antiseptic sponge around the exit site of the line to prevent infection. Sterile gloves will also be needed during the procedure. To begin, we prepare the surface where we will put the equipment. So I will don clean gloves and use an antiseptic wipe to clean the surface. This is done to prevent any organisms that may be present on the surface from contaminating our fields. If there is 
visible soiling, please remove such. The wipe along with the gloves will then be discarded. After preparing the patient by explaining the procedure, we would prepare the equipment. This is a central line dressing kit. Again, our institution has a pre-prepared kit. Please check with your own institution regarding the equipment that you have. This kit contains a mask that I will don right now in preparation for doing the dressing change. I will further open the kit Our kit contains an antiseptic swab, sterile gloves, a dressing, tape, and a label for the date, so you date and time the dressing. An extra pair of sterile gloves can also be prepared if necessary. The sterile antiseptic sponge is also opened into the sterile kit. I will begin with antiseptic for my hands, and then I will don clean gloves to remove the old dressing. It's helpful to have the patient positioned in a way that allows them comfort as well as you proper access to the dressing. I am on the same side as the dressing, which is preferred for access to such. While removing the dressing, it's imperative to make sure you do not dislodge the line. This can be done by removing the edges first. You may need to use adhesive tape remover. This is gentle on the patient's skin and helps us remove the dressings that may be stuck. Once the edges have been removed, the center of the dressing should lift easily. With repeated dressings, it's not unusual for them to stick a little more. By pulling on either side of the dressing, the clear part lifts easier off the patient's skin. If there's any remnant left over, this should be removed as well. This allows more area to be cleansed with the disinfectant. Once the dressing is removed, you should inspect the site for any signs and symptoms of infection, edema, redness, or drainage. As you can see, this site is clean. Now, again, I will clean my hands with an antiseptic cleanser or soap and water. To begin dressing, I will don sterile gloves. In our 
our kit, we have an antiseptic sponge that will be used to cleanse the skin. We start with at the center with a gentle scrubbing motion, slowly working our way out. We do this for one minute for lines that are in the chest or what we consider dry areas. If by chance we are changing the dressing in a groin place line, we would do this scrub for two minutes. Again, this is the policy at Children's Hospital Boston. Please check with your own institution regarding their policy. Please note, the area should be cleaned within a two inch margin of the insertion site. After scrubbing and disinfecting the skin, we allow the area to dry. If it's not allowed to dry, it will not work effectively and the dressing will not stay properly. As it dries, we will prepare our antiseptic sponge. This sponge is put around the tubing at the exit site. Again, this is impregnated with an antiseptic to prevent site infections. Always test with your sterile glove the clean skin to make sure that it is dry. If you put this dressing on a line that has a considerable amount of drainage, it could cause skin breakdown. So it must be dry and the line must not have drainage. Our site is almost dry. In our kits, we do have a dressing that has a transparent center. We'll apply this dressing to our site once it's dry and secure it. The transparent center allows us to constantly visualize the exit site of the line, therefore looking for any signs of infection. We do not cover our line with a gauze unless there is excessive bleeding or drainage. We use the Center for Disease Control guidelines regarding covering the line. They propose a visual clear window over the line so you can see the exit site. We place our dressing so that we can visualize the center and the exit comes out the bottom. You want to make sure that all sides are sealed effectively to make the dressing occlusive. We also have a label here for the date and time of the change. We date and time our dressings so that we know when they need to be changed again. To secure the end more firmly, we do use another device that comes with our dressing kit. Tape can also be used at the bottom of the line to secure it more firmly.
This maintains the occlusiveness of the dressing. Now that the dressing is completely occlusive, I can take off my mask, as can the others in the room, including the patient, if they're wearing one. At Children's Hospital Boston, we change our dressings every seven days, or if they become non-occlusive or are saturated with drainage. Then we would change them as needed. Please check with your institution regarding your dressing change policy. And there you have an occlusive central line dressing. Complications. The complications that you may observe include an accidental dislodgement of the central line, infection at the insertion site, or irritation or damage to the skin. Please note that you may or may not observe any of these complications during or following this procedure. I encourage you to monitor your patient closely for signs or symptoms of complications and to be prepared to manage them, which includes having the necessary equipment available to treat the complications should any arise. Assessment and Monitoring First of all, it is important to monitor the patient's skin, which includes looking for signs of erythema, exudate, or a rash. You will also want to note the catheter type and size, the depth of the catheter insertion, and if the catheter placement changes during the procedure. Documentation. Following dressing a central venous catheter, you should document the following information in the patient's medical record the indication for the procedure, the date and time of the procedure, both on the dressing as well as on the patient's medical record, the characteristics of the skin, including signs of erythema, exudate, or a rash, the depth of the catheter insertion before and after dressing the central venous catheter, the patient's comfort during the procedure, and any adverse outcomes. That's the end of this segment. Thank you very much. Please help us improve the content by providing us with some feedback. What did or didn't you like about this video? Was the content too simple, just right, or too difficult? Was the length too short, just right, or too long? Any additional comments? You can either click the Start a New Discussion button and type in feedback or send us an email at openpediatrics at childrens.harvard.edu. Note, feedback is not required to complete this activity in the Guided Learning Pathway.